is going on, guys? We decided to go over the week's trades, actually more like just uh, Friday's trades. We had a lot of beautiful trades as the IWM and the S&P 500 took off to the north side, so we decided to get together. This is kind of just like a laid-back little thing we got going on. There's just a handful of us that decided we wanted to take a Friday night learner while everybody's out partying, having a good time, or hanging out with their friends. We are hanging out with each other so that way we can learn and better our process. So we got Holy Diver in here. Thank you so much for joining us, brother. Haven't seen you in a little bit. Good to see you. We got Pablo Picasso, my newest found member who is actually just absolutely rocking it, dude. He uh, He's helping us out a lot. Red Baron, good to see you. And T-Wise, his first time joining us is tonight. Uh, so it's good to see everybody. So uh, cut the bullshit. Let's get right down to it if you guys don't mind. Um... Pablo, why don't we just start by going over the questions and stuff, man? Right on, yeah, no, for sure. Um, what? Uh, so, so I had one written out for you there today. Yeah, um, I'll read is it. That, okay. Yeah, I'll just read it right out. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. So, um, well, first and foremost, I I really appreciate you asking these questions. I love the fact that you're not just asking questions when you join in here. You have watched the videos. You can, you, you literally, um, obviously have taken notes, um, and, and you know, the criteria. So you went through the trading school, you, you met the, you met all the criteria and now you're asking the questions and you're asking hard questions. You're asking questions that we don't usually, um, have to go over right away with somebody who, you know, is, is this new to the discord and, uh, they're really, really good questions. That's why I was like really excited about this, you know, instead of you know, going and relax. And I'm like, let's, let's dive deeper into this. So, um, I'm just going to read it verbatim and I'm, I'll put it up on my screen here as well. And, uh, I, I'm going to share my screen with you guys as well. So let me just do that. Uh, so that way you guys can see what is going on here. All right. So you, uh, Pablo Picasso, beautiful name, by the way, hey, share on your screen, how to share on your screen. What, what's that? Share on your screen, how you share on the screen. Oh, how I share. So you yeah, click. How they can find you. Huh? Show them on your screen how they can find you now. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can just click this live button. So on the left-hand side, if you scroll down, you can see the live button right here, and you just click on this, and then this will pop up, and you can blow it up full screen if you want. So that's how you figure that out. Um, okay, so right into the question, Pablo Picasso says, I guess at the moment my first question revolves around when it is a good time to enter a trade long. I believe a lot of it is based off of what I got from your trading school videos, for example. Is it in a hot sector? Does it have a relative strength rating of 90 or above? Is it in a stage two uptrend? Does it have a higher average daily range than 4%? Is it following moving averages? Uh, was there previous move up and then a base bull flag formed? Is it a base breakout that's creating new high higher lows? Uh, did the breakout occur on high volume? Did it get tight? And do I have proper risk? These are, this is amazing notes. So then the question ensues is, so I think the area where I likely struggle or I'm confused about uh, is the, the volume component, which this is the hardest part, right? That and selling, buying and selling are the hardest part. Identifying what you want and then actually getting in at the proper time is the hardest part. So it's a lot, there's a lot of discretion. So he said, I'd appreciate it if you could provide a bit of more clarity with what you require to enter a trade when it comes to volume. Maybe you could start with a slightly more in-depth explanation of how the market Smith volume is more powerful than the typical volume indicator. Do you look at the percentages it displays or just the numbers and the volume SMA? Hope I didn't go too on long here. No, you didn't. I'm really happy that you asked that question. Those are damn good questions. What's that? Those are damn good questions. Oh, hell yeah, they are. I mean, I, you know, <clears throat> first I, I have to say that Dude, I'm refining this process still. And I will always be refining this process. And the biggest major thing why I say that is because just when you think you understand it and you have it down, all of a sudden something changes in the market. And you have to be, like William O'Neill said once, like a um, like a wind in the tree, you know, like a sapling in the wind. A wind in the tree. A tree in the wind. You know what I mean. Dyslexic over here. Uh, uh, a tree in the wind. Very malleable. You know, when the wind blows, you bend. When the wind blows, that's the market. When the market changes, you need to change with it. And so it's going to do all these things. So um, you need to understand that 
there is no set prime, you know, this percentage uh, for me, for me accordingly, the way I trade, okay? So <clears throat> I want you to take everything that I say, ingest it, but understand it is not the only path down this road. And you'll find that um, when you're watching like a lot of interviews, like with through w Richard Moglin, I've probably watched every interview he's ever done since the inception of him doing interviews, that and all of the old um, chat with traders, uh, all of those interviews. I mean, I've listened to probably thousands and thousands of hours of interviews with traders that trade like us. And a lot of it's psychology because you can't, you know, they're not, not everyone's giving examples. Now Richard Moglin is, but what we can do is we can give some examples today on some of the most current um tickers and even on the trades today so like we can start with ASTS okay um, <clears throat> so if we look at ASTS we need to make sure that it, it is within our structure our form right uh, am I am I going down the right path for you Pablo absolutely no this perfect. is great perfect perfect so <clears throat> we obviously have a runner this thing's moving up um, it started with a gap up on earnings and it took off it formed its first trend it gapped up on higher volume it pulled back and then as it pushed higher, it started riding this 10 day moving average and it starts moving up, okay? Now, <clears throat> we can see here, because I use the five minute, sometimes I use the one minute. It really, that, that's, that, that is all dependent on who you are, all right? And I'm gonna show you on this because I use this for volume and we can look at it on the trader, the trading view. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the trading <laughs> view because, um, I, I actually take the trade on this brokerage and I do all my charting on TradingView, okay? So I take the trade on here, so I always am looking right at this right before I take it. So I just wanna show this to you. So so you can clearly see, like it's it's obvious that this is higher, right? We can, we can bump this up and I'll get rid of the active trader. And you can just see the volume. It's a lot thicker here and it's much higher. So if I'm just looking at the volume, a lot of times I just bring it up on the chart instead of messing with the numbers or bringing it up on trader view. Um, actually, I'll, I'll show you another thing that I do as well, um, where, where I think you'll be a lot better at it, Picasso, than I, than I am. But I like the visual aspect of this. Now I know on this run up, we're expecting higher volume, okay? But on this pullback, we're expecting a volume price contraction or a VCP, volume contraction price. Uh, am I saying that right by Mark Minervini? Uh, do you remember Dan Bob? How I can't. I know it's. I know it's VCP or VPC. Volume contraction price. I'm pretty VCT. sure. VCT. Not T. No. It's VCP. Oh, well, volume, right. volume price contraction. Regardless, yeah. the yeah. the idea behind it is the volume on its contraction starts to grow less, meaning less people are selling this. More people are buying on the way up. You can see the high volume, the high volume. And then as we pull back, you can see less volume on the pullback, less volume while we we are still pulling back, less volume than this the two run-up days, right? So this is the volume contraction pattern right here. It's getting right. less, okay, as this is high. So then when we look over here and we see this run up on the hourly breakout or on the five minute breakout or on the daily breakout, how, wherever you're looking on the time frame, I had it drawn on the daily time frame and in the daily watch list, um, we, we, we posted it as a daily or hourly trend break. Well, we seen in the morning it popped up here. Okay. And when it popped up here, let me just bring this up. You'll see Right here's the trend break, right? It broke its trend. It broke its downward trend where it took it off this peak, took it off this peak, pulled it right down, it popped up. This area right here is not enough volume though because we can go ahead and look back and you can see this visually is clearly not any higher than anything else that's right here, right? Now you can see, right. you can see it, it's much higher than a lot of its days traded volume here, but it's nothing like this over here, right? But then, all of a sudden we get this huge volume blurb right here, okay? This huge volume blurb. And as that moves up, we'll zoom in on it now. Actually, let me, we'll just take the average of this, right? <clears throat> we can see that this is where the highest trade volume is on its run up before. And if we zoom, now you can see on the pullback, there's no volume, right? 
Now, as we break through, if we zoom in on this, this red line is where that average volume was. You can see we are starting to ramp up and we're much higher than previous days. Okay. So this, yeah. this volume that's here is higher than the past three previous days. So that will grab your attention. And then because it's grabbed your attention and you're like, okay, well, I want to, I want to look at getting into this trade now because we're pushing up higher. We're, we're getting uh, above higher than previous day. We're making a new higher low here, right? Now, what do yep. we, now what do we do? Well, now we, if we want to take a bid, we have to make sure it's within its average daily range. So now I'm seeing the volume. Now I'm accepting the fact that I want to be in this stock. Okay. Now that I've accepted that fact, I'm going to measure from the area I want to get in and I'm going to pull it down to the low of day or the previous low of the day. In this stock, you could have used previous low because it's within the average daily range. The average daily range of this stock is 10.2%. You could have used previous day's low, but I have been growing more accustomed to using the day's low because I like to get a lot tighter risk, you know? So now we're sitting here at 3.82, which is much further under than the 10.2% that it actually moves. So that tells me this is good risk reward and I can accept and get into this trade. So I get into this trade and just while we're on the subject, how do I get in? Well, I know that this is at $12.15 and the low is 17.70. So I bring up my calculator and I do $12.50 minus $11 and 70 cents. And then I get 80 cents. So then we're going to multiply 80 cents by however many shares is your risk multiple. Okay. In this typical situation, I took one fourth of my shares off of here. Um, actually, uh, did I only take, did I take, I, oh, I only took an eighth off here actually. So uh, I was only I was only holding two share two hundred shares of this actually, so I must have just did this too quick or uh, took in too many. But if we multiply this by two hundred, my original share size, I was only risking one hundred and sixty dollars on this trade, which is only half of an R. I'm only risking half of an R on this low. So I'll mark this stop loss here, and now I know if I buy in here at two hundred shares, and this thing comes down and stops me out then I will actually stop out for a $160 loss, which is half of an R or half of a percentage of my overall trading account. So I know exactly what I'm risking. Does this make sense to you, Pablo? And ask, ask any questions that, that you feel is necessary. Yeah, no, that, that makes perfect sense. And I did exactly that as oh, well. Apart from, from, I did, um, yeah, I, I actually posted, I posted it um where where i i had it calculated but mine was one percent like i, I did one percent of your trading account correct that, that's correct and, sure. and i was using i was using that daily low yep. as, as my stop Beautiful. and uh, and bought that many shares according to that calculation that you just gave there perfect so, so well done yeah. now now didn't didn't you tell me when i first asked you that you're a pretty experienced trader right <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've, I've been at this for a few years. Okay. For sure. So you yeah. understand the implications. Um, sister, sister travel, if you'll do me a favor and mute your microphone until you have something that you want to say, just because the background noise kind of messes with the uh, recording. Um, and so, uh, Pablo, um, so you understand the implications of the 1% risk, meaning if you take... You know, since since we have uh, only like a 30% win rate, you know that your wins have to be higher than your losses and you have to make sure that you can afford so many losses. Let me mute this really quick. And you can afford so many losses. So if you lose 10 in a row, which is possible, if you lose 10 in a row, you're losing 10% of your account. You understand? So just remember right. when you're risking that 1%, what that actually implies. I don't ever tell anybody to risk 1% until they know what the hell they're doing. So um, anybody that's new, like once I get to know you and I and I know you you know risk management and all that stuff, I won't be so adamant about saying this, but I just don't wanna see anybody get hurt while they're learning. So if you feel like you know what you're doing and uh, and, and you're working on this setup, you know, don't, don't obviously don't take my word for it. Um, take your own risk management and your own capital into account that you can learn 
on taking one share size. You can learn on um, uh, paper trading. You know what I mean? So just keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. I have no, a no worries. Okay. Um, before we right. move on, any more questions? Dan, Bob, what you got for me? Question. Yep, this is the exact area thing. Perfect. So as I told you early, uh, I was watching this right out the door, and it just couldn't get the volume there or the price there at the same time. So yeah. I kept waiting and waiting. And then I eventually started, some of the others started to pop. So I was over looking at them, seeing where they were at. And that two minutes that I was gone, was when it broke out. Sure. I ended up getting, I don't know, maybe it was three minutes, whatever it was, it wasn't long. Uh, so I ended up getting in at, is it 12? 12, 43, does that sound right? Yeah, let me check, 12, 40. Yep, that's uh, roughly yeah, where I you think told I me. I would measure the ADR, but you know, God only knows when doing it right. So I measured the ADR for you, and yeah, I think you were close to half, let's see, six. Uh, yeah, a little under ha half. Yeah, because I use low day as the stop. Um, yeah, so this this is what would be right. very useful for me to 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 understand is is um, like you you can see when when I got in, I, I actually had in in the Discord I posted the the exact date and time that that um, that that I bought and uh, and. Um, and I wondered, okay, well, like I, I did get a better price and everything, but what, what makes that trade wrong in, in doing that? Like, and because, because I don't want to do it wrong. I want, I want to, I want to know, I want to understand, um, sure. that because even though, even though, uh, Dan Bob got in at a higher price than me, his was the correct decision. Oh yeah. And I, I want I want to understand that <clears throat> concept. Sure. Like what what made his the right decision and mine the wrong one? Because sure I made it. Because I made it. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um. But do you understand why now? No. No, okay, I don't. Sure. Okay. Perfect. 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 Yeah. So if you look, if so, where did you take? What price did you get it at? And what time? Um, I I have to. I can't. Um, pull up my discord because i'm sharing you're sharing the screen here but i did you I can... uh po you said you posted it right yeah yeah it's okay uh, i can find it no big deal yeah or right, dan bob can you help me find uh where he posted the trade uh, i will try can you give me the title of how you posted it for us uh pablo Ooh. so i can search for it it's did a way to search yeah just put it okay. as they i think yeah you can still use her Okay. Over here, everything they post it. All right, thank you. Are you able to find it, Dan Bob? Oh, we'll find it. I did no search. Problem. I did search because he's. They're quite both of us doing the same thing. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Oh, here I know I might be able to see it. I know. Um, We're not in any it? rush, so. Uh, so this was your asking about the GME. Yeah, it was a picture. Uh, let's see. Oh, it was a picture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there, there it is. There, there it is. Um, it. 1122 is, uh, not on uh, Wolf, that, right. Um, yeah, but actually it was before that. Hey, there it is at, at 1223, no, 1043. 1043. 10 that doesn't make sense. Oh, is that the time that you got in? No, sorry. Um, that was the, uh, that was the time I posted it in discord. Oh, so okay. the time I got in was 1018. 42 a.m. That's when I bought. 10, 18? Yeah, and, and it was $11.97. Okay. All right, so perfect. Can you see on my screen here? Uh, I'm going to uh, mark this out where you got in. Uh, I'll mark it 10, roughly right in this area. And I'll mark it in yellow. Okay, so this is where you got in. Um, right, right here. So this was literally right before the volume came in. So if we look, I'm going to mark down here where the volume was, where you got in. So the volume was right here, maybe a little lower. And I'm looking on the five minute. We could even go in on the one minute and really, really get down to the nitty gritty here. So we go here on the one minute. And you can really see it. It's like clear as day here. Like see how low this volume is right here? Yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is when you got in right here, okay? 
This is lower traded volume than, well, it's about the average low of the traded volume of all the pullback days, you see? Yeah, Where you got yeah. in was the lowest, okay? Where Dan Bob ended up getting in was where we get this big push up. Like this right here, this yeah. this uh, uh, boner volume, this yeah. right here, this is where you'd want to get in. This is where you okay. want to grab a hold of that, okay? Uh, okay. And so right when we seen this, right when this came in, I actually got in right here on this one because I found okay. that that was high enough and it was within my thing. And so I decided to take it because it was the highest volume for the day. And to me, it looked good enough. And I could have been wrong, but to me, it looked good enough to get in. Um, and I took it. Um, and the reason why I took it is just simply put, because I decided that it meets all the criteria. I'm expecting for the volume to come in. And if you remember, I only took half of an R. Now, I had a crazy morning this morning. I expected it to pull back a little bit and then some more volume to come in and then so I could add more into it. But I decided to take a starter risk and this thing just went without me and by the time I looked at it again, we already had all this volume coming in and I wasn't going to add into this trade up here. Okay. Right, so that's right. why that's why when we're down here and we're trading somewhere down here, you're bouncing off VWAP. There's many reasons why we can say, hey, this is okay to take this price. You're still meeting all your criteria. You're still above, you know, the, you're above the breakout area, yada, yada, yada. We could go on and on. But yeah. my data, my back-tested data that I could I could show to you um, with uh, Kobe here, uh, what, what we can show you is like how each one of these trades, when we take each one of these trades, it was always backed by volume, always. If we okay. did it back by volume, we felt like it was um, kind of a, more, a little bit more risky. So think of it this way. If you and I, we're not going to make this volume candle. You and I, we don't have the money to, to put this volume candle in. If we look at ASTS, this has, let me look at the float really quick. Um, it has 148 million shares in the float. So this volume that's traded right here is 160,000, uh, almost 161,000 shares. You and I, I mean, me personally, I don't know about you, but you and uh, I, not, we're, yeah. we're not even going to buy 1,000 shares of this right now, right? 2,000 shares. 10,000 shares isn't even really going to bring this volume candle up, right? Mm -hmm. So that being said, I much rather get in with the Giants. I want to ride on the Giants' shoulders as to where that same Giant that's buying up here could be the same giant selling right here, right? So I'd rather be with the giants that are buying in because this price action is backed by big buyers rather okay. than be in something where there is no big buyers standing here. I don't want to be standing in their way if they decide to sell. So here comes the giants. Here's the giants. Well, here I go climbing up on their shoulders and here's Dan Bob taking in at 20 or 1243, right? So he's on the giant shoulders right now, okay? Um, now, like I said, this is very discretional. You know, you might you might say, well, hey, you know, I want to be in before the breakout. Now, Danny, one of our really, really good, um, one, I, the, Danny, I actually consider a mentor. You know, he does, we don't trade necessarily the same, but we have the same general thoughts and ideas. So I consider him one of my mentors. I've learned a lot from Danny. He has been questioning me, why do you wait for the volume to come in? Why don't you take the breakout? And so I argue with him constantly about this. He likes to take the preemptive volume will be coming in because the breakout's here. I like to wait for the volume because it helps me take that trade on confidence, you see? So if you were to take this before the volume, you could do a half share size, kind of like I did, where I seen some volume come in, but not enough to really own the trade. So I get in half share size. And then you wait, and then the volume comes in, and then you get a little bit more in. Well, now you still have a little bit better of a price, right? right it hit all the right. criteria. It hit the sector, the ADR, the relative strength. So I took a look at this. And it helps that I've played this stock before. I actually played this stock all the way down here. I played this trend breakout. It was a little higher on the 10-day moving average, but the, it was a clean breakout. 
I really liked it. At the time, I liked seeing the volume come in here, and I played this. I actually played this trend break as well, added more into this trade, and played this thing all the way up here, dude. Like, I, I made a ton of money on ASTS, so I already have played it, so I kind of have this, this feel for the trade. Each stock's different, right? Right. And, and so I felt comfortable trading the stock. I didn't think it was just going to gap down and wash out on me. You know, I, I felt comfortable already. My confidence had already grown in the stock. So there's another reason why I got in a bit preemptive before the boner volume candle came in. You know what I mean? So. Well, and another reason would potentially be um, that the Russell 2000 was way up the oh, last few days as well. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, if you watch any of those shows, I've been saying since Sunday um, that I'm waiting for the breath in the market, and I think that is going to increase the bull run where everybody's like, "There's no breath, there's no breath." I say, "Well, be positive. It po pays to be positive. Once we get that breath in the market, then we're going to like really that. see the bull run." You know, so um, yeah. Like, here's a question. Like, I I would think that like last week you would have to. Probably normally for for this process here, Dan Bob's um, choice would probably be have been better last week because because the Russell 2000 was still still stagnating and and terrible. So you really better wait for for confirmation of of high volume. But yeah. but yours maybe because the whole sector was was uh, skyrocketing the last few days. Um, you can potentially be a little more lenient on uh, the amount of volume you require. Sure. Maybe. I really yeah. like where you're going with that. And I think that that takes really knowing your shit and being in the market and getting a feel for the market. And the one thing that I really wanted to tell you right off the rip is because you brought up in your questionnaire here, you brought up the stage two in the stock. Okay. But the first thing you want to look at is the stage two in the spy or the IWM, okay? So right now we are definitely in a stage two, okay? If we look at it on the weekly, you can clearly see this is a stage two, where this is your stage one, here's your stage two, right? We had a couple of stage threes here, but then they went back to stage two, okay? So let's keep that in mind too, is first we need to identify on Stan Weinstein the stage that we're in. Now IWM, IWM has been in a stage three for quite some time and I always get my stages mixed up. So I need to bring up the picture right now just to double check. I, I hate, <laughs> I hate the fact that I have to do it, but I much rather do it than sit here and talk out of my asshole. So, uh, let me uh, bring so this up. Quick comment real fast while you look for that. What? Say that again. Sorry. A quick comment while you look for that. Please. Yeah, Pablo, you got to realize I've only been trading like six months two months on my own completely and i've never traded before in my life yeah now i've been around business and management and know about the stock market that kind of stuff but i, I didn't know how to read a chart in no way shape or form look okay. like a bunch of squiggly lines to me so right. i'm still practicing myself making good entries i mean even today i, I went in late I, I went in at 43. But I, really but I don't. I still it. don't consider it a chase, though. I still consider it a great buy because you were yeah, still. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I don't feel like it was a chase, but I was there. I mean, I was literally ready to go as soon as it broke. I. You're just not going to make nearly as much money as you could have. have. You know. What the correct price is? I'd have been really doing my procedure. I'd have got in at probably like 35 cents. Sure. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here's the Stan Weinstein stage analysis. This is on a weekly, okay? And he uses a 30-day moving average on the weekly. I don't, I don't really need to look at the weekly uh, or the moving averages whatsoever, but this is the weekly on the IWM, and you can see that we are in a stage three. This could very easily go into a stage four or back into a stage two, okay? So, or you could consider, if we zoom out, Here's the stage one, and here is the stage two, okay? This could be argued. I would say that we're in a stage two, but this stage two is just super slow because the IWM is a lagger. But if we look at the S&P 500, you can see that we are clearly in a stage two. There is no denying 
that we are in a stage two, okay? Um, we didn't even really make it into back into either a stage one or a stage three. We are in a stage two. So, I, and I've been saying this for a long time now, as long as we're above a 10 and 21 day moving average, I am risk on. And here's your 10, here's your 21. The only times that I've been nervous, and Dan Bob was here for this, when we broke this 21 day moving average, I said, I'm hands off for a while, guys. Let's see how this thing works out. And sure enough, we had a bloody six day sell off and all I did was dollar cost average in the market. What's that? I was trading that week. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I actually did some shorting which now you, you guys will know I don't short anymore. I, I, I made a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but it's not part of my process. And my, my whole process now is to become more disciplined in my process. So I won't be shorting. Um, and then, um, yeah, we've been on a stage two here ever since this. You know, this kind of like pulled back and we thought we were gonna go into a stage, uh, a stage one, or I'm sorry, a stage three. Um, but it just continued higher. Um, so for, first and foremost, let's keep in mind that we want to make sure and understand the stage that we're in when we do our stage analysis before we even take a trade. So yes, I think you agree, you bring up a really good point, Pablo, that um, yeah, when, when we're looking at these trades and we're getting ready to take the trade, um, knowing where the market is at, first and foremost, is going to help you understand uh, how much you want to get in, when you want to get in, um, and... Uh, if it hits every other thing, the sector, the ADR, the, you know, the relative strength. Um, and if you've been in it before, if it's following the moving averages, uh, all of that stuff. So, um, do, do, uh, do we have any more? I, I I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place now. Do, do we have any more questions on that? This was great. Was this it? Was okay. Woo. No, the this is the pause made me nervous. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, you no, know, I was waiting for others to pop in, but um, cool. um, no, it is. I I really appreciate um, understanding, like why why I was wrong getting in there, and and now I I totally see it. Like I I don't want to say that you were wrong. Well, but, right, but but part I, of our it, process will say we need volume. So it's not that you were wrong. It was right to take the trend breakout, but there was a better time to take it. So I don't, I don't want to say that you were wrong because who am I? Who am I to tell you that you're wrong? I understand that you're trying to learn my process, but you need yeah. to understand that you will eventually have your own process. So keep this whole thing in mind. You might not be wrong, but well, no, sometimes but being me, early, I, go ahead. I, I definitely see what you're saying. And now I would absolutely agree with you. Like, uh, I think I was wrong. Like, well, I know I was wrong. I know it. Okay. And and it's great. Like, I just learned something. So I'm really happy uh, to see it. I, I just didn't, like, I think what, what I was looking at was I was I was seeing on the early part of the morning there, the five-minute candles and the one-minute candles seemed to be higher volume than, than the previous days at that time. At, at at those at those first number of minutes um yeah it, it looked it looked a bit more but but what i didn't realize is you guys the process here is really looking for a pop like it's not yeah. it's not a it's not you know just just um 10 percent more volume than oh, typical man. yeah it's, I, it's dude, I, can, I can go through so many trades right now that we should be in because we didn't get in because there wasn't a pop you know there i mean there is um, I think WGS is one. Yeah. So WGS, look at WGS. This thing is ripping right now. Uh, I guess it had a pullback today, but look at right here is a trend break right here. See this downward trend, new higher lows following a 10 and 21 day moving average. It breaks out, but guess what? There wasn't enough volume on this pop right here. There just was not enough volume right here is the breakout area. And that's just, it, I mean, it's not any much higher than previous days. I mean, that can be argued, but I just yeah. didn't like it. And guess what? We would be up, you know, uh, let's let's just take a look. Let's say we got it right here at this price. We'd be up 18% on this trade, but we didn't take it because we didn't uh, anticipate that pop. You know, um, RDW. RDW is another one right here. Here was the trend break that I pointed out. New higher lows following a 10 day moving average, the trend break breaks out, but look, where is the flipping volume on this thing? This was the breakout right here. No volume. 
No volume. Now we're looking at the hourly, but still, I you know I don't want to zoom in on every every single one of these. There wasn't any yeah. volume on this trade, and there's so stinking many. Oh, here's a um. Uh, so why is Bollywood important? What's that? Why is lots and lots of volume important? Because that that's price action in itself. If you get in when the the giants, when the big the big guys are buying. That shows that there's an area, if it comes back down to that area, it's going to be defended. And then if it does break through that area and it stops you out at low of day, then you know that you were wrong. Because if the big buyers are, def are, are able to buy it there, but they're not going to defend that price and continue to buy up, then you know that you were wrong. And it's okay and easier to get out rather than go, oh, well, well this, this area might hold now or this area might hold, or maybe the 21 day, or maybe this next line of resistance. You could just go down and down and down until you're flipping broke, right? But instead, we buy when the big buyers are there. We're gonna defend, we aren't gonna defend, but the big buyers will defend that area or that price, and then if they decide not to, well then batten down the hatchets. Use that risk management and get the hell out of the stock. That's why I like to buy on that volume. Man, what a great analogy. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, and there's one more yeah, example, yeah, though. What's that? I was asking how well theater stood that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Beautiful. I know you're probably like me. All I heard the first two months before meeting David was, you know, buy when a stock's beat down, buy when it's low. You know, it'll it'll eventually go up. And, yeah. and then when we, what, what our philosophy, and this is William J. O'Neill, if you read his book, talks about this that we're looking for successful stocks that are already on the move they've proved themselves yep um one care. of my favorite quotes we're is a deal we're not trying to get a deal at a, you know buy when they're low and get a deal yeah we're trying to find the next breakout one of my favorite quotes and i'm, I'm probably going to butcher this but i'm going to try one of my favorite quotes was in how to how I made two million in the stock market, and it was by Char. Is it Darvis? I don't I don't know if it's Charles Darvis, but his name was Darvis. Charles Darvis. I think it's Dar so. Darvis. Whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. And um, uh, he says, after everything that he has went through on trying to crunch the numbers and figure out if it was a good enough company and yada yada, he went all through all the stuff. He found out. You buy deer and sell dearer, quote unquote. You buy deer, you sell dearer. I mean, if the stock's moving up higher and faster, that's when you buy it. And then you sell it when it's even higher and much, you know, and it's continuing to rip. And he actually invented the box system, you know, where, uh, and we, we won't go into that, but I, I, I played that for a while too. But it's all base momentum, you know, structured breakouts where you know it it moves up higher it pulls back it bases for a while and then it breaks out on higher volume again and you buy in and you play that momentum you know where other people like dan bob was saying they're waiting for a deal oh tesla's all the way down here uh you know i mean look at this let, let me use this as an example really quick tesla you know look at this beautiful stock right oh tesla's down here we gotta buy in down here okay sure they made some money are they selling here now they're, they've lost money. Okay. Okay. Um, let's, okay. Oh, Tesla's pulling back. It's below its 200 day moving. It can't go any lower. Right. Okay. So they buy here and then it goes lower. Then they buy here and it goes lower and it's got to bounce off this area. Right. Well, it does, but then it goes lower and lower and nobody really thought it was going to come all the way down to here. Actually, I do know a few people that said we're buying at the hundred dollar area because that's a psychological area. And I knew a couple of guys actually who were buying it up as it came down to the hundred dollar area, dollar cost average in, and are still holding. But we're not trying to do that. We're waiting for it to make new lower highs, form a trend line, and break out. And look, here's a trend. Here's a trend. Here are breakouts, and look at the volume that it's accompanied by. Now I have to wait till after earnings. But now it's pulling back. Is it going to form a trend line here? You know, like. Here, I'll just show you. Like for a long time, I would try and like do this. Like, oh, there's a trend line here. No, this is Tesla. It's gonna probably base out for the next, mm, let's say month, and it'll do something like that. Okay, and I'll leave this line here, but you'll see it. 
it'll probably bounce up, come down, bounce up, come down, bounce up, come down, bounce up, come down. It'll have a shakeout day, just like you see right here, and then it'll rip higher, you know? Um, and so instead of trying to buy it up down here when nobody knows where the hell it's going to go, and you're going to guess, and then have your money stuck in this thing for two months, we wait for these breakouts. Then you get in, you hold on to it, you get out half after three to five days, or after two to four R or 10 R, whatever the hell you're looking for, it's discretional. And then when it comes back and it closes below the 10 day moving average, then we exit out. Then we're getting the meat of the move. You know what I mean? So it's just uh, fuck trying to catch falling knives, man. It just doesn't work. You're, you're going to go broke doing that crap. So um, you got to start recording these. Uh, oh, I, am, I am recording, actually. We are the recording. meat of the move. The meat right of the move. The oh, move. yeah. The meat of the yeah. move. I'm so using that. I, I really think I'm just repeating a lot of what I heard, though. I think Mark Minervini says, I'll never buy the low. I'll never sell the high. I will always get the meat of the move. I think he said something. I'm probably butchering everything I'm saying tonight, but yeah, I'm sure he said something like that. <laughs> it's somewhere in there in everything he's ever said. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, want... I tell you, I'm, I'm certainly not new at this. Uh, I've been I've been at this a long time, but um, I've never found anything yet that that fits my trading style. And everybody has a different trading style. Um, you know, like some people like like you know calls and op puts and options and that sort of thing. That's way too. It's it's not my thing at all. Um, and uh, um, I, I definitely tried, like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a deal hunter. I, I want a deal. So I want to buy when it's low, like when sure. it's, when it, and that, and that has just not worked for me at no, all. No, it won't. And, and I see now, now I started watching you guys and, and, and seeing it and, and I, I chart constantly. Like I am, yeah. I am in the charts all the time. And once once i started seeing what you guys were talking about i'm kind of like holy shit this is totally true like this this is totally true oh, and yeah. uh, like I, I am all in man like like uh, all right that was gonna be my next question pablo is you you came in here you've been in here for like three days as far as i know you've already um cleaned up our our charting system so now instead of us going through 500 we only have to go through 200 you know and now that means I can go through, instead of going through 500 a night or 500 in one week and then just using that list, now I can go through 200 a night easily. I could flip through charts like that easily and see what's set up and what isn't every night. And that just, so I was hoping that I would hear, I was actually going to ask you that. Like now that we went through everything, do we yeah. work for you, Pablo? Because we'd love to have you a part of the squad because this is all we're doing is we're trying to surround ourselves with smart people. You seem like a smart person. We want to be able to have more eyes on this market. So we're trying to create a, a crew that we can actually have constantly watching the market. So if I decide that I'm going to go help my dad out on a roof, and I come back to that, that night or that afternoon or the next day, you can say, hey, Dave, this is what happened in the market. Here are the trades that I took. Here are the setups that are working. A lot of false breakouts aren't happening. You know, like boom, 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 boom. And I can get up to date by my squad and vice versa. You know what I mean? Like we can all be one team and we can weed out all the bullshit. There is no noise. Nobody's saying, hey, uh, Ticker XYZ is breaking out, but yet all it is is a big move on volume. There's no setup. There's no criteria. There's no new higher lows. There's no 10 or 21 day. You know, like screw all the noise. We have perfect set criteria. We all trade the exact same and we don't all have to buy the same shit. I, I, Kobe and I disagree all the time. He, he, sometimes he hates the shit I buy and sometimes, well, I can't always say I disagree with Kobe. He's very meticulous and I really like, I really like what he does. But a lot of times he'll say, you know, why are you buying this on an hourly trend break? I don't like it. You know, I'm not seeing the new, high, new higher lows. And I'm like, no, Kobe, you know, this is right. You know, and, and I buy and, you know, sometimes I make good money. Sometimes I'm like, ah, you were right. You know, so, and it's fun. It's, it's really good. I think for the, for this, for the squad to have different opinions. So that way we really can be either confident in what we're doing, or we can actually be shown a better way. And so I'm, I'm really happy to hear what you said, Pablo. Welcome to the squad. Um, I, and I hope you're with us for a long time, brother. Yeah, no, no. 
This is, uh, this is fantastic. Um, so well, I'm while we're on the subject though, have you read, um, William O'Neill's how to make money in stocks yet? I have not. Okay. No. You need, you have to buy that book. It's, it's recommended or at, we're going to make it. It's not even recommended. We're going to make it, it. You have to read that book. Okay. Uh, a smart mm -hmm. guy like you, you need to read that book. The first 100 pages, it's only a 430 page book, but the whole first 100 pages and most of the pages after that are all picture books, right? The first 105 pages are all picture books on the, on the weekly time frame. So that way you can see a lot of these basing structures and start honing your eye in on these. Um, and then read, learn, and um, memorize Can Slim. C-A-N-S-L-I-M. It's, um, it's, it's his book. way of, what's that? Oh, so it's a part of the book. Yeah, it's a part of the book. You'll, you'll learn it and you'll, you'll read it, you'll understand it, and, um, and, and you'll love it. Uh, especially if you like the way we trade. That is the, the start of it. And if you look in our resources, actually, um, you'll see, uh, and, and I hate to give you a ton of homework, but I think it'll be really good for you um, to at least go through some of this. But it is it, not in the library. What's that? It is not in the library. No, <laughs> no. Okay, that's fine. I'd rather you need to buy a hard copy of that anyway. No, actually, I have, what I was yeah. gonna what I was gonna do was say to go into our resources, and I was just gonna bring it up, but for some reason, I think because I'm sharing my screen, it won't let me go down to the resources area. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. Um, but. In the resource area, you'll see all the books that are in there. You should go through and read all those books. Uh, if not, get some books on tape. You don't have to do them all tonight, <laughs> but um, definitely start with How to Make Money in Stocks by William O'Neill. It'll help you understand a little bit more. You can actually listen to Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. That's not in the resources, but you can listen to that on YouTube for free. It's an awesome, awesome book, and you'll hear little nuances in there um, of all the stuff he says. It's the best, in my opinion, the best story uh, of a trader in the 1940s who started in the bucket shops working numbers. Um, I mean, there's just, there's so, there's so much good material out there and I'm just, I'm pumped to have you with us. So welcome to the squad. And okay. um, uh, I yeah. think I've exhausted a lot of this time here. So do we have any more questions guys? Cause I'm going to be honest with you. I want to start, I want to start my weekend um, and I want to get this posted cause I think this is very fruitful. I was going to say that we have Amazon prime day. Uh, coming out 16th to the 17th, and books will be really cheap. There you go. Oh, oh when when's that? 16th to the 17th. Awesome. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, That's cool. We got. I I was I actually wasn't uh, expecting to have so many people in here. I thought we'd just have two or three, but it's nice to see that on a Friday night we got people that are willing to learn, that are working, that are working hard. Uh, T wise, thank you for joining us, man. Um, we, we check our schedule out. It's in the resources. We have a schedule. Uh, actually, no, we have a schedule. It's in the schedule <laughs> on the left-hand side here. Um, we we get together quite often. Um, if almost every night except for Saturdays, um, we usually do something. Um, Friday, this is extra credit. Um, Red Baron, thanks for joining. Pablo, um, Pablo, we're gonna have to get. I want to. I don't want to put it on you, so I want to learn how to do it myself on how you refine the scan refine that scan each week um hmm. or even if you know just just so we don't have to like ask you to do it each time but he's going to be coming out with a new scan um tomorrow night and oh. we, we, it would be great if you could refine that scan and then repost it in the resources or in the um in the uh the, the stock watch list um where you find Absolutely. it i would really yeah. appreciate that that would just take that would sum up a lot of time for us um jimmy yeah, does all, think, go ahead. all you would have to do um is uh, is um we just get your pie charm and you just download the code and okay. uh, hopefully oh yeah actually might uh yeah might we'll, we'll figure that out have, yeah we'll, okay. we'll figure that out for sure we'll figure that out um jimmy thanks for joining us holy diver thanks for joining us dan bob you're awesome thank you so much do you guys, just before I let you go, though, I want to make sure everybody has a chance to to bring anything up that they wanted to. you guys have any questions for me? Oh, Bob. Bob's here. What's up, Bob? Sorry, I missed you, brother. Hey. That's <laughs> all right. You. Uh, do you hey, guys Jim. have any questions or anything like that? 
All right. Awesome. Well, thanks guys. I mean, honestly, I, I'm really surprised to see so many people here on a Friday willing to learn. I thought I was the only nerd out there. <laughs> Looks like we all are, baby. Uh, I'm glad you guys are here though. I really am. Uh, it, it does mean a lot to see you guys just randomly show up for this random meeting. Um, it was a good one. Uh, we're refining processes, baby. So Pablo, thanks. Appreciate you. Brother. Okay. Okay. Have a great weekend guys. You too guys. Um, you too, Pablo. Any other questions, just throw them up in the chat and we'll definitely go over them on Sunday. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.